My dad would be so happy to see a, a full room. You know, that he really was cared because that was his big concern was, you know, does anybody care about me? And thank you guys all for coming because now he knows that everybody did care about him. He was uh, our center of attention. <laughs> don't know where to begin. I know he was, he was a stubborn guy, hard-headed, but he had the most kindest, warm heart ever. He was, you know, he was always there for me. Maybe not the times where I really, really needed him, <laughs> but he was there. Wow, I had it all planned out in my head. I was trying to write it last night. I was sitting on my bed and I couldn't even think of anything. I was like, I got it, I got it, it's in my head. And getting up here, I can't even think of it now. <laughs> but the last time I remember of having a conversation with him, as everybody knows, he was all into the Bible, but he was not perfect and he made sure that to let everybody know he was not perfect, that he had his ups and downs, his flaws. You know, he cussed, you know, he drank, you know, but, you know, he still, you know, he, he loved that Bible. And he would always try to preach to me about it, and I would always tell him, I don't want to hear it, Dad. I don't want to hear it because I'm not perfect. I, I'm still making sins myself, so I feel like I didn't want to be a hypocrite, you know. But he told me that, you know, there's no such thing as perfect. You're always going to sin no matter what, you know, just as long as you, you know, believe in God and, you know, and have faith and stuff. And, you know, he knows that you're a good person. And I was like, yeah, I know. But the last conversation we had in the kitchen, um, don't worry, women, I got offended too, but you might get offended too. <laughs> but he always tell me, he's like, you know, the problem with you women these days, you guys try to be like us men. You know, you try to, try to work like us men and try to do everything like us men. And, you know, your guys' job is to, to stay home and, and clean and cook and take care of your men. And that's why God made you to bear babies, not us men, you know. And I'd always tell him, I'm like, uh-uh. I was like, I was like, that word 2015, Dad, I was like, it ain't like that no more. I was like, you wonder why? I was like, you ain't got nobody right now. I was like, talking like that, not every woman thinks like that no more. He's like, well, call me old school. And I was like, well, you're going to have to have a little new school, too, with that old school. I was like, because us women, you know, we want to be equal. He's like, there it is. That's the problem. You guys want to be equal with us. You can't be equal. He's like, you guys are meant to be here um, to serve us. That's why um, God put Eve here on this earth to serve us men, to, to serve Adam and be there for him and, and take care of his needs and stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, Dad. I was like, I'm surprised not every girl has slapped you in your face. I was like, you make me want to jump this counter and slap you in the face. And he just started laughing <laughs> and stuff. So that was the last conversation I had with him. And it was getting heated because I was getting mad, you know, because I didn't, I didn't like us women, you know, have to bow down to the men. He's like, I'm not saying bow down to the men. And so I was like, well, that's how you're making us seem like we are. And he's like, no, Miha, he's like, no. He's like, you know, we're supposed to work and provide for you guys and take care of you guys. You know, we pay the bills. We take care of our family, our kids, you know, while, you know, you women raise them and stuff. And then we got into the whole thing of, I was like, yeah, but us women, you know, we're the ones that have the kids and not you. And he's like, yeah, but if it wasn't for us men, you, you guys wouldn't have kids. I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, you guys don't create the hands and feet and hearts and, and all that. I was like, we do. I was like, and he's like, yeah, but if it wasn't for us, you know, you wouldn't be, a, your mom wouldn't be able to create those hands and feet and everything. So it, it was just funny. We just, it was crazy because it was just 20 minutes. He was, 30, 20, 30 minutes he was there and we were waiting for Christine. And we just had like four or five conversations all in one. It was just, it was funny. And yeah, he ended it with, where the hell is Christina with my truck? We gotta leave. <laughs> He's like, damn that girl. <laughs> He's like, she always does this to me. She always takes off, takes forever, and we need, we need to go. But yet, he's sitting right there, and then he cracks open another beer. I'm like, Dad. I was like, well, you got to go. I was like, what are you doing? I was like, right in the I was like, I'll finish it before she gets here. I was like, okay. <laughs> but um, I, I have a lot of stories of him. You know, and just recently when we went over there not that long ago to, you know, for Ruben to take his, his citizen test, and 
he was so proud of him and, and happy. And we went that Friday, and then it was no attempt to sign a paper. And we went that Friday, and then we're getting ready to leave and everything. He's like, come on, you guys, just stay again. Just stay one more night. Please, just stay one more night. And we're like, no, we got to go. We got to get back to Nia. You know, we have nobody to watch her. He's like, come on, just, just stay one more night. So we're like, no, we got to go. And we got in the truck, and, and we're driving away, and, and, I, and we're going down 107th Avenue. And I told him, I was like, you should just go back, huh? He's like, yeah, we'll go back. So we go back, and then we pull back in the driveway and honk, and they're like, what the heck, you guys? You know, I'm back. And I was like, yeah. I was like, you talked us into it. He's like, pray it on. He's like, yeah, we're going to grow up some me and put some music on and have a few beers. Yeah. He's like, all right. And then the next day came, and he's like, you guys are going to stay again, right? And I was like, no, we're going to go. we got to go. You know, we already told Ruben's dad to watch him, and we got to get back and, you know, and stuff. And he's like, no, come on, you guys, just stay one more time. And we're like, no, Dad, we really got to go. We got to go. And so, again, here we go, driving down 107th Ave again. And then um, we're like, should we go back? And he's like, yeah. So we're like, okay, let's go back. <laughs> so we ended up going back again. But this time, we didn't pull up to the driveway to surprise them. We, um, we called and we're like, we're going to stop at Ross really quick because we need to get some, some clothes and some toothbrush and toothpaste because we didn't have anything. We didn't pack nothing to stay another night. And then we pulled back up and he was all happy. He's like, yeah, right on again. <laughs> and stuff. But oh, I'm trying to remember all the stories I had with him. And I, I remember one night when uh, he came over and we were just hanging out, all of us. And he got the washer game and he was just like, man, he's like, I didn't think this would cost so much. It's like, what, 40 bucks, Andrew? Almost 50 bucks. He's all just for this little cardboard box yeah. and a little metal thing. We could have made one. So, man, 50 bucks almost. And I was like, Dad, it's okay. You know, as long as we're here having a good time together, you know, who cares? He's like, Yeah, you're right. You're right, Mija. And then when it gets towards dark time and, you know, he's tired, but he don't want to tell nobody he's tired. He wants to act like he's young again and still hang in there with us. He's like, Let's go watch a movie, you guys. Let's go watch a movie. And we're like, Yeah, that's your bedtime. He's like, No, I'll stay up. I'll stay up. And yeah, sure enough, every time we put the movie on, he's always the first one to fall asleep. And so when he did that last time, I went and got my nail polish. And I painted all his fingers and his toes pink and everything. And then um, I went to the bathroom. I was nice enough. And I went to the bathroom and I put in the corner nail polish remover and the little cotton balls right there for him. And then when he woke up, it, um, I think it was in the middle of the night. Before we all went to bed, he woke up. So we got to enjoy that part where he caught, he woke up and he saw, so what the, oh, Rosie, Rosie. And I was all, what are you talking about? He's like, I know, it's you, you did it. You always do this to everybody when they fall asleep. You put makeup on them or permanent marker or nail polish. And I was just like laughing and he's all, he's all, see, I knew it was you. I was like, and so I was, what did I say? I was like, I was like, I didn't say, it. he said somebody said it. He tried to, oh no, he tried to like con me like, like do a reverse psychology on me of saying, oh, I already know it was you. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but he went in there and took it off. And he's like, how do you get this off? I can't get it off. It won't come off. And he finally got it off, but it was still stuck around his skin. <laughs> and stuff. Um, but yeah, I remember that night. But I can't think of any more. There's like so many more. But when you're up here in the spot, you just can't think of anything. So maybe um, I'm going to pass the mic to anybody else who wants to think, say something. But if I think of something, I'll probably jump back up again. <laughs> so, but please, everybody, you know, I encourage you guys to share your stories about my father. You know, it mean a lot. You know, he'd be so proud that, you know, he was thought of. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be shy or you guys, you know, are nervous and, you know, got those twisted stomachs. But, you know, untwist it and, and get up here. You know, share that story. You know, he would like it uh, a lot. There was this, before I pass it, there was this one poem, actually. I know, I'm a hogger. <laughs> um, somebody, I forgot who tagged me in this on Facebook. I don't know, uh, I, can't, I can't remember who. But if you guys hear me read it, just raise your hand and I know who <laughs> it was. But um, it said, the moment that you died, my heart was torn in two. One side filled with heartache, the other side with you. I often lie awake at night with I often lie awake at night when the world is fast asleep 
and take a walk down memory lane with tears upon my cheeks. Remembering you is easy. I do it every day. But missing you is a heartache that never goes away. I hold you tightly within my heart, and there you will remain until the joyous day arrives that we will meet again. I love you. I love you guys all for coming. And whoever wants to come up next, you're more than welcome to. sleep at one o'clock in the morning and uh Davey's calling me, Danny, wake up, wake up. I'm like, Davey, I'm sleeping, man. Wake up, I need your help, I need your help. I'm like, oh man, come on, baby, I'm sleeping. And it's one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock, and he's all, come on, I need you. Come on, Carnot, I need you, please. I'm like, all right, what, well, what, what? I get up and we go downstairs and he wants to bring the piano up to his room. I'm like, what? Are you serious, Can we wait till the morning? He's like, no, I gotta do it right now. Just bring it. Help me do it right now. So we start moving. I'm like, oh my God. So we start moving it upstairs. The piano's like 300 pounds and our rooms are upstairs and, and mom and dad's were downstairs and my dad gets up hears all the noise and God, Vamos, what are you doing? It's like, Davey, it's his fault. <laughs> and my mom gets up and she's yelling at us and she couldn't believe we were trying to move the piano halfway up the stairs, just rolling back down. And it was a hassle. We just made so much noise and just things like that. We just grew up and had so much fun. Um, I bought a Harley back in the day and he's like, man, hang on to it. I want to get one too. And finally he got one. I had to sell mine. So we never got to have one together. I don't know. I miss my brother. Took us all by surprise. But, yeah, he was part of the family and was big hearted. I always wanted everybody to love him. He wanted to feel that love. Every time he had problems, he always called me. We talked a lot. He owed me a golf game on Saturday. Didn't make it. Um, and we had a lot of good times growing up. He was crazy, and I don't understand, like, sometimes we both could have been killed in the neighborhood growing up, and I took something stupid like this. Oh, I had a, he had a chopper one time, it was a, it was a chopper, it was a, I think it was a, a Triumph, he loved that Triumph, it was, it had long forks on it, it was really hard to ride, and I was about maybe 15, 14, and I couldn't start it. Johnny had the legs to start it. And I was like, Johnny, come over here. And uh, I knew how to hotwire it. I, I couldn't kick it. But Johnny had the legs. He was strong. And he kicked it one time. That stuck started up. And I was like, wow, I'm all happy. And I took off around the corner on it. And went around the block. And I'm looking. And I feel somebody behind me. And Davey's behind me with Joey and, and the Camaro. And he's out there yelling, Daddy, get off my bike. And I'm like, oh, I press the gas faster. And I took off. And, didn't even know how to drive it, but I went around the corner and I made it. As soon as I got back to the house in the driveway, I put the kickstand on, and he was so close to grabbing me in the back of the neck, I took off running, I jumped the fence, and he could catch me up too quick. But yeah, I was something like, else, man. And I took care of his uh, 54, the green one, and he had to go away for a little while. I took care of that 54 and the 57. I watched him every day, drove him, and he got home and took him away from me. I didn't get to drive him anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had a lot of good times. Mine is foggy right now. But, uh, we, all, we couldn't wait for uh, our brother uh, Richard to get out of prison one time. We were in Tucson. Everybody went, me and Dave said, We're going to go. We uh, went in my truck. And uh, we surprised everybody. We got there and pulled up to the prison. We got to see my brother come out. We were all happy. And, uh, he couldn't wait to see Richard. He missed him so much. Uh, I know we didn't have a lot of years together. <laughs> I wish it could have been longer. Uh, I know he's happy. He's in a better place. 
I, um, I had a dream about a week, week before he passed away. And I was, uh, I remember I was back in X103 in California, in Santa Fe Springs, where we grew up in our apartment. Very young, and I was playing in the living room. And I heard a knock at the window, and I, I looked, and I'm like, that's my brother Davey. And then I know what I said. Deal art. I, I saw these faces and just this smile and expression. They were real happy and joyful. And you could tell he had a lot of life and happiness, just so happy. And I went to open the door and I woke up. And then a few days later is when my brother passed away. I, I know he's in a better place. I know he's with the Lord. He had, and he always preached to me. He's always told me to keep reading the Bible. And, and I was. Uh, Joshua 1 8 was my verse, and I don't know it by heart, but I always told David that's what I liked. And uh, we have a lot of good talks together. Big brother, big little brother, little brother. He was always there for me. When I came to Arizona, I didn't have very much work, and I wanted to go back home to California. And he's like, No, come on, stay here, stay here with us, you know. And, I'm out here, and I'll get you work, and I'll help you. I'm like, all right, got kids, I can't do it. I, you know, I need a good job. And shoot, the next day he called me up, and we were doing, um, we were doing plaster and building stuff. And I mean, he kept me busy for weeks, making money. And we did real well, and did really good. Our oldest brother taught us a lot. Brother Chico, that's his soul piece. He um, taught us everything about construction and how to build and stuff operate and we share those qualities to all of our nephews as much as we can. Thank you everybody for coming. There's a lot more stories to share. I know we have them all in our heart. God bless everybody for coming. Thank you. Good afternoon, this, um, John, David's brother, and uh, <clears throat> when war was small, we used to play a lot. He never, I know I'm sort of handicapped, but he never turned me away. And uh, one time I told him, I seen his bike, and I told him, uh, teach me how to ride it. And he goes, oh, okay. So he teach me how to ride it and change gears and everything. And I take the gears, I put the clutch in, and I, when I put it first, I had to slow down, and I put the clutch in, and I, when I had to go, I put the clutch you know, out, and I give a little gas, he goes, he teach me, and he told me the instructions, so uh, I learned, and for, uh, now I know how to ride a bike, but they're kind of dangerous in the street. So the only, so I kind of laid off because they're kind of dangerous. Even in the dirt, kind of dangerous. So I laid off the bikes. So me and him, when we were small, we used to play and we used to play in the pools and we used to play sip and slide. And I, I grew up with him. Me and Davy, we used to go in the room and. A little high. <laughs> Johnny! <laughs> 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 um, Davy's niece, Chuko, Chuko's daughter. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, the last time I seen Davey, we were at Rosie's. It was for Ruben's birthday. And I don't drink. 
at all. I hate alcohol. I can't stand it. But of course, Davey, you know, come on, take a drink. Take a shot. Take a drink. No, Davey, I don't want to. And if you see that picture up there, I'm holding a shot. <laughs> and I took a shot. And I was like, all right. I took the shot. He's going to leave me leave me alone. As soon as I put it down, he poured it. He's like, come on, just take another one. No, I don't want to take another one. You know? We had a lot of holidays at Rosie's house, a lot at my house. Davey was always the life of the party. You know, and um, Nick doesn't drink either, but we were at my house, and he's always telling Nick, you better go in there and ask Nitra if you can have a beer. <laughs> and Nick's like, no, Davey, that's all right. I don't have to ask him. He goes, no, you better go ask her. You know, so Nick would come in. He said, okay, if I have a beer. I don't care. Go ahead. You know, so then uh, Nick comes out, and he gets a beer. Davey starts yelling, Anitra, Nick's getting a beer. <laughs> After he told him to go in there and ask me. This is so hard. Davey. He's always fighting with us. Always fighting with us, you know, and I fought with him on the phone. It was over the money he was getting from my grandma, yelling and cussing at me and you know, all mad and called my sister. I'm like, you know what Davey said, this and that, you know, and I thought he was, I thought we weren't talking. I was like, I'm done with him. And then Christmas comes. He shows up at my house, he's like, hey Nietzsche. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, I guess we're not fighting. But that was that was one of the best Christmases I've ever had. We didn't, nobody fought, believe it or not, nobody fought, and we had a good, good time. I'll never forget it. It just happened, this, this happened too soon for him to go, you know. Just don't know how much more I could take, any of us could take. But my grandma got her chion. She got her chion. And she got my, she my dad, and they're together. You know? I thank everybody for coming. And Stephanie. You know, you got, you got, your dad loved you guys so much. The little bitches. <laughs> That's what he called them all the time. anymore he still watches over us. I had another dream but this time it was different. We were all at grandma's old apartment having the time of our lives together as usual. The kids were playing and of course I was eating my mom's food. Simply just enjoying everybody's company. The last thing I saw was Uncle Davey chasing and playing around with the kids. All of them destiny, Jasmine, his suits, little ribbon, all of them. I looked up at the sky and noticed it was changing colors with lightning. He stopped and gathered all the kids to watch the lightning together. After about a minute or two, they were all running around again. Little Ruben stood next to him, nope. Uncle Davy bent down, held him with one arm, and pointed at the sky. I couldn't hear his voice, but I could see him telling Ruben, look me, who look. He hugged him so tight and then let him go. 
We may have bumped heads with him, but he loved us all. Always trying to get everyone to say I love you. Always telling me you're Rodriguez. And he was right. I may have the last name Martinez, but I'm a Rodriguez by heart. He sure had a lot more to say than that to everyone else. Like melon head, <laughs> cancer patient because of my eyebrows. <laughs> Big hungry, nine head, all those weird and hilarious names he would come up with. That's what I loved about him the most. He was one of the ones that taught us how to be a smart ass and get away with it. <laughs> That's something I'd want to keep alive in the family forever. I have a goal, not really for me, for Uncle Baby. Every single time he saw me, he never failed to bust out his guitar and play Simple Man. He'd always say, Mija, check out this cool song I just learned, it's so easy. Yet it was the same one he had been playing for, I can't even tell you how many years. <laughs> with this scratchy voice from smoking. <laughs> I still get that feeling of excitement and motivation, motivation of learning, learning it when he showed me every single time. He's always wanted me to learn it so bad. He was my uncle, but he was like a father figure to me too. In his honor, my goal is to learn that song, whether it takes me months, even years, to play it to perfection and play my heart out for him. And I know he's going to be really proud of me. We really need to get together, not only because of situations like this, but because you guys are all I've got. Just thinking of everyone coming together makes me happier than you can imagine. That's what a good time is to me. Before I end this, I want everyone to promise me to get together for reasons other than this. Promise. Everybody. <laughs> All right. We're back up what you say. <laughs> Melon heads. And another thing. Um, you know, him and Junior got a pet chicken named Jeff. <laughs> With one F. Yeah. <laughs> one F. <laughs> when we had spent the night after we heard the news, uh, I woke up in the morning and I heard a rooster. I'm in Phoenix. What the hell? What? Why do I hear a rooster? And I went in the bag to go smoke a cigarette, and there's a rooster right there with big old letters and Jeff. And I was like, why isn't there two Fs? But. I was half asleep, so I was like... Um, when we go to the park, I'm going to bring my guitar, and I'm not so good yet, but whoever knows how to play it, it would be awesome if you could teach me some things about it. Thank you. try to speak without getting emotional or calm. I know David since the age of nine. Um, ever since I moved here um, from Mexico, um, me and my brother, we always looked at him as a father figure. Um, when we arrived to the United States, um, there was um, me and my family were indifferent to social stratifications, and he let us know that we were not any indifferent from any other people. He let us play in a swimming pool. He used to take us to Lake Havasu. He used to take us to the river. He treated me and my brother just like his family. You know, to consider Rodriguez family friends. We're not friends, we're family. I have recollections of him always saying, um, I, was, I, would, I would always ask, questions as a child to David all the time. Bogus questions, as a matter of fact, like, what time does the sun rise? How high can a pit bull jump? 
<laughs> and I used to pester him a lot. And then he always, always used to say, um, hey, he's going to be a little detective. Mr. Medina is going to be a detective. <laughs> and uh, many years later, I'm a counselor. I provide outpatient behavioral services, and I do ask a lot of questions. David was correct. He was saying I was going to be a detective to an extent. Um, you know, me, I, me and my brother love him dearly, as well as his family. He was always a great man to us. Uh, he was always pessimistic. Every time I see him, he was an incredible man, always smiling, always uh, greeting me with a hug. I remember, uh, you know, being young with Junior and him taking us to the Boys and Girls Club to, to practice boxing. And I know he wasn't my father, but he would praise me like he was my dad. He would, he would ask me, hey, ooh, show me, show me the, the pose, put him up, put the dukes up, buddy. And, uh, you know, I, I love him dearly for that. And he's, he's an incredible man, and he's always going to be in our hearts. And we're always going to remember him. Last time I saw my primo, he threatened to kill me <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of my family, so we didn't, uh, we didn't have a, a good last conversation, but I knew he was just talking shit, and he was mad, and we all get that way. We've got tempers in this family, for sure, no doubt. Um, I moved here like five months ago to clear my head and to reconnect with my spirituality on a higher level. And with my family out here that I have not seen and get to know the kids. And um, the day I found out about uh, Davy, I called Rosie right away because it just took me by surprise. And she said something really uh, relevant and it's been sticking with me. And she said, Why is everybody calling now? Why is everybody calling right now and telling me that they love me and they're here for me? And she's like, You know, we're all here and we don't spend time together. And I don't get to see you. You've been here five months, and I've seen you like twice. And you know, I've reached out to you, and you're too busy. And she's right. And we all get caught up in our worlds, and our kids keep us mad busy. I get that. Um, but I think it's important to understand something. And something that I've learned by just meditation in the last five months is that even though we've got a big ass family that's passed on, and they're in heaven now, we keep saying, you know, they're in heaven, they're in heaven. This is our heaven. This is our heaven here, and we have to make it our heaven. And we have to love each other like this is heaven. And we need to stop fighting. We need to stop threatening to kill each other. We need to hold on tight to each other because he, he left us really quickly and really abruptly. And I have a theory that when people leave us like that, they're meant to be teaching a lesson. They need to shake it up a little bit. And we know he's known for shaking things up. And maybe that was his calling for us as a family to come together a little bit tighter and a little bit closer, you know? And love up on each other a little bit more because we're losing each other quickly. We got the last of the Mohicans, Theo David, you know, last man standing here. We need to just tighten it up. So I love you all very, very much. And for all of you that I, I don't know too well, I don't even know who's my family in here anymore. Half of us are related, we barely know each other. So I love everybody here. Mijas, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, Man, he created some beautiful kids, though. And Junior spit an image of him, and he said, um, 
We said a few minutes ago, you know, I'm just trying to be strong. You are strong. You got his blood in you. And be here for your sisters now. And, you know, take that role, the man in the family. So, um, God rest your soul. Primo, I love you. Thank you for giving me 44 years of my life of um, unbridled craziness and wild stories. And thank you for sharing your music and your heart and your laughter and your joy and your energy with us. God bless you. Just want to know I'm, I'm, I'm friend with the family and everything, and I just want to let all the family know I love you so fucking much, and um, <laughs> I I lost them, my friend who work at the ark and everything. He died this month again. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I love all the f um, people right here. And I would, the reason why I came here today, and I want to show my love, my respect, and everything. I love Junior. I love him. I love everybody. <laughs> and I just want to let you guys know I love you guys so fucking much <laughs> and everything and, and I've been <clears throat> I've been hanging out with the family and everything um, um, back in the day and everything since I was 19 years old and now I'm 35 and and everything and Junior knows what I've been going through and everything, and me, me and Junior and his uncle, been everybody been my homies and my <laughs> my homegirls and everything, and I love you guys so fucking much, and and that's why I'm here today, and um, do my respect to the family I and, love it. I love it. and I love everything. It. Um, I love this oh. sucker right here <laughs> so freaking much <laughs> and everything and and I love Junior, I love his uncle and everything. Good You're welcome. Good job. We love you. I love that. That was awesome. I told you guys I'll be up here hogging the mic again. <laughs> Funny about how he was saying the F word and, you know, my dad was a good person. He believed the Bible and everything. Yes, he wasn't perfect, he said, but that F word was in his vocabulary and he tried not to have it there. It was a habit. He literally tried. No, he, that's how my dad was. I told dad, I was like, wow, dad, I was like, if I had a dollar every time he said the F word, I'd be like 50 bucks right now. He's like, I said it that many times? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh man, I didn't realize that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, yeah, but um, I thought of some stories too. Um, actually, in that picture that Anitra was talking about when my dad made her take a shot, we were we were playing a game. Sorry, guys, I know a lot of stories have drinking involved, but my dad loved his beer. <laughs> he said, if I worked hard, I deserve to drink a beer. <laughs> so, but in that that picture, we were playing a game. Christine made us all play a King's Cup. And we actually made him play it, and he was copying all our dance moves, and we had to say names of shoes. Well, knowing all of us, we're up to date about shoes, and my dad's old school, and we're saying Nikes, Adidas, and all that stuff, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he saw moccasins. <laughs> we're like, really? He saw their shoes, right? <laughs> started laughing and every time we came up with shoes I always I beat him to it I was all moccasins and he started laughing um that was that was a funny night we were just cracking up laughing really bad it's so hard and um actually can you have my phone really quick babe so everybody could just hear his laugh one last time I actually have it have it on a recorder of him laughing and it's hard to mock it but nobody could can imitate that laugh I mean, if 
find it. Sorry, guys, bear with me here. I know. I told you I was a hogger. Let's see. This is when we were riding the motorcycles. And he was talking about Solidity. Going all the way to Camp Verde. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the laugh that didn't stop. The whole night was, was that laugh. And I would never forget that laugh <laughs> ever. And then also on the, the slideshows as well, when we have the paintball guns right there. Um, I feel like, can I take this off? <laughs> um, the paintball guns, we all went. Um, we're like, he came down and we're like, you want to go with us? He's like, yeah, I'll go with you guys. And I had my whole camouflage gear and, and Ruben had black and John had black and my dad had blue. And of course they all stood out, not me. <laughs> they couldn't find me. I was buried in leaves, trees, waiting for them. And I remember I was tucked in these trees and I had a branch and I bent it towards me so they couldn't see me. And I seen my dad try to roll under a, a big old log. He literally rolled under there. And as he was rolling, I went, shot him right in the butt and all of a sudden I hear ah <laughs> and I started laughing I was like you're out he's all man he's all I tried to pull up a guy and I guess I didn't do it <laughs> and I was like oh I was laughing my butt off I was watching you roll and you didn't go very fast so that's why it was easy to get you because <laughs> he was bigger heavy set then and um and then there was another time where I came around the tree and he was standing there in plain view, like he was not hidden, like he was just in plain view. And I came up and shot him in the back and he had a big old bruise and he started crying and I was like, you're a big baby. <laughs> um, and then that was that time. And then there was another time where we would go ride on his Harley all the time. He would come down from when he was living up in Flagstaff and he would come down and he would take me for a cruise all the time. And we go cruising all around town till we went to the VOC and I just love cruising behind him in his bike. And then there was one day where we went for a cruise and he took the back bar off and it was just his seat and the back seat and then the license plate part and we went to Circle K and we're about ready, we're pulling out and there was this car coming and he tried to, he was trying to beat the car and then as he went, there was another car coming. I'm like, Dad, there's a car coming. He just steps on the gas. I fly back. I almost fell off that bike. Literally, I almost fell off. But I got stuck in between the seat and the license plate. And when we got home, I was hitting him. I was like, you almost killed me. What the heck? And he's like, well, thank God you got a big butt home from your mom. He's like, he's like, that license plate stopped you. I was like, yeah. I was like, you need to put that cover up. He's like, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll put it up. I was like, yeah, I'm going on there again with you until you put it up. And he never put it up. And we never got to have that cruise again down there and stuff. Oh, man, there was another story. Thinking, look at these pictures. <laughs> There's a lot of stories behind these pictures. There's the one where he's showing his, his last name, which he was so proud to finally get because everybody had it and he was the only one that didn't have Rodriguez. And he was crying about it. He was so butthurt. He's like, you guys need to put that name on me. And so I was like, when are you guys going to do it? And they got pictures. Um, did Uncle Danny put those on the board? Because I put the boards up where he's finally putting it on him and he was really happy about it. But when we came down, um, he got off work and he saw, he saw me how he's like, I need, I need profile pictures for my Facebook. And I was like, all right. I was like, he's like, but he just got off work and stuff. I was like, okay, dad, well, here. I was like, I got some a little bit of water and I, I was like slicking his hair back and he crouched down and he got in front of his bike and I took that picture of him. And then I was like, okay, let me get one where you're standing up. I was like being his little photographer and stuff. Cause I was the only one that didn't make fun of his pictures and stuff. And I was helping him out, and I told him stand up, and he's like, oh, but my hair's all messed up again. I was like, go get Jira's hat. And he's like, yeah, Jira, go get your hat, go get your hat. So, huh? Who, who went and got his hat? Oh, Ruben. Ruben went and got his hat, and he put his hat on and stuff, and he's all taking his picture. And then I was like, okay, now, now unbutton your shirt so you can get your last name. He's all, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, unbuttoning it. He's like, yeah, right on, right on. That was his one word, right on, right on, and stuff. And, so he got that picture of the Rodriguez and stuff. He was all happy about that. But did he fall asleep getting that tattoo? <laughs> I guess that's where I get it from because when I got my side tattoo, I fell asleep too. <laughs> um, but, um, oh man, it's just, 
talking about Facebook, thank God he had a Facebook because he had a lot of selfies. He was a, a selfie addict. <laughs> and so when it got it started, uh, got it activated, and then I helped him figure it all out. And oh my God, it was a mission. It was like a three month mission of telling him how to figure it out. Do you want to say that? My name is the previous fantastic. <laughs> My name is Gary Rubeck. My name is Paulina. Hello? They had their own little name calling. They always called them all the kids different names. Isaac Fathead, and they would call Caesar Jr. one of his twins because Stephanie would always say he looked just like he growing up. Um, but know that one picture where he's wearing a San Diego shirt and just looking. Everybody made fun of him and he put it on. He said it was my fault because we just started his Facebook. And I put, I didn't know what to put for him. I told him, what do you want me to put? He's like, I don't know, I don't know. So I put just thinking. And Junior and all them used to make fun. They're like, yeah, you're just thinking. He's like, Rosie put that. I didn't put it. <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty funny. I don't know you get to it in my No, you're fine. So on. So on? Yeah. I just wanted to talk about this one time that I remember when Davey lived with my dad and Jesse. And told Jesse, well, because I don't know if y'all know, but Monica, that's his wife right there. And, uh, but they, you know, always off and on because they fought a lot, like always. <laughs> but um, Davey told Jesse to make him a profile on a website. So Jesse turns around and puts Davey on a gay website. <laughs> and Davey was wondering why all these men were calling his phone. <laughs> and they finally, I, did, you, did you finally tell him? Yeah, I gotta straighten out. <laughs> I just wanted to share that one because he was so mad. It was funny. <laughs> Anybody else have any more stories? Because after we're all done with our stories, Pastor Tim's going to come here and announce Brian to sing, so. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you hear myself. Um, I know my wife can't make it up here. She's a little emotional. Uh, one of the things that she would like to let everyone know, and I mean, we heard it all from... Coming down here, um, he was stubborn, hard-headed. It was a good thing to stay away. Um, but you should be working. But one of the main things I heard from talking to a lot of people that came over is this guy opened his doors for so many of you guys. So I think you know it's, it's awesome. When I'm listening to Ruben's friends and uh, Junior's friends, and they're talking of a different guy. <clears throat> Must have had a great heart. Uh, never really spent a lot of time myself with them. So I can, you know, tell you as many stories as Rosie could. Uh, I like to take uh, positive things out of every scenario that we have in life. One of the things that we can, I can take positive is, uh, it's been quite a few of us that have been fighting Raymond on this bike thing. I think Angela and Danny and Stephanie. And we keep we kept fighting right. Now. And I think thanks to this guy here, we want that fight ring. You're not getting a bike. Um, and it's unfortunate that it's, it's this way, but you gotta take a positive out of everything. Um, I can't tell you I feel your pain or understand it. Uh, there's, you know, there's no way to measure that. Uh, I just think he will be at peace on how he left. Uh, Christina's doing something for herself. Uh, Rosie, well, Rosie got ruined, so she's fine. 
I think we're seeing Junior make better men decisions uh, in life. We're seeing him grow up. Uh, he's at a better uh, state in his life. And Stephanie stuck with me. So there's nothing he can do anymore. Uh, and just to, I don't, as I mentioned, I don't have as many stories. Uh, I do have one great story. Uh, I think I yeah, felt like I saw him in a different way. Uh, when we were down in California, we, did, we went and played golf with Ruben and, no, I'm sorry, it was uh, Danny, Raymond, Junior, and myself. And I'm always, I was teasing Junior about his not being able to beat me. And I mean, this guy was such a cheerleader. And I was like, dude, David. Leave him alone, man. He's a man. You don't have to cheer him on. Come on, son. Don't let him get you, son. So I, you know, I get up to the tee box uh, and then take my drive, and it was pretty decent. He gets out there on the, you know, quite a ways, and I turn to Junior and I say, "Go ahead, top that, Junior." And then Junior gets up there, and whacks the ball, and I mean, no, no type of wood swing, but. You should have heard David. David was like, yeah, son! Yes! Man, that is far! And I'm looking at David from the... What? I mean, I just barely got past my ball, David. Mm. No, no, see, that, that went far! <laughs> like, dude, you might as well put some pom-poms, man. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, when I, I, I... I was actually stepping behind all of you guys. And I said, man, the boy... <laughs> That man loves his son. Hello. I heard you speak in front of people, so just bear with me. Um, like my brother said earlier, uh, when we first moved here, we didn't know anybody. Um, after, like a week after we moved here, uh, the guess who moved next to us? Not really in his family. <laughs> so uh, we didn't have any friends, and they didn't have any friends. So we came friends, and it was me, and my brother, and my mom living in our house. We didn't have a father figure, so like we always like hang out, with Junior, and Rosie, and the whole family, you know. And we always like look at David like a father figure. He always took us fishing everywhere, you know, like like if he was, we were the, his own kids. I mean, we grew up, and if if um, there was a party or something that we had to go to, I would tell Junior, and Junior would ask me, well, you had to tell my dad. And I would go talk to David, and David would, like, would say, it's fine. He would, Take me to the side and talk to me. He's like, you know, you like a son to me, but you're taking my kids and you're older, so you're gonna be responsible. And I know you're a good person, so you're gonna go. With, you're gonna, they're gonna go with you, and just please take, bring him back safe. And uh, there was just something about him that I I like being around him. And. I mean, every time he saw me, he would start laughing, you know, like, oh, Gerardo, you're Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, once I turned 21, he was like, finally, finally, you can go to the bar with me, you know, and we'd go to the bar. And he would take me to a, with all his friends, which was like his age, and I was the only young one, so he would tell everybody, who's this guy? He'd be like, oh, he's my bodyguard. <laughs> so, I just want to say he's, he was like a family to me and my brother and um, Brucey, Junior, Christine, you guys are like family to us too, so, so it's that, that's all. Hello, um, I'm Davies' um, granddaughter. Um, I have a story I want to tell you. Um, one time, it was me and Destiny. We were in Cottonwood at Auntie Rosie's house. 
and he had his, he brought his bike, that bike in the picture, and then um, the handlebars had red on it, and he said, Jaslyn, Destiny, go 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 get a sharpie and cover the red with black, and I was like, what? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. Yeah, they were like pinkish, reddish, and then he was like, this new Jasmine go color with black. And I was like, what? Why? <laughs> Just leave it. Um, there was a lot of times when I go to Phoenix and go to his house. Um, me, my brother, Isaac, and Destiny, we would sit in his room. And he would sing Simple Man, and me and Destiny, we were just like, you have a scratchy voice, you can't sing, Grandpa, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then, so, yeah. We miss him, I miss him a lot, and I know he's in a better place now. And he's watching over us, he knows that we love that that we love him. <laughs> so, um, I just want to say I love you, Grandpa. I miss you. Um, I'm his granddaughter and his no. first granddaughter, and there was this, <laughs> this one time, uh, it was the it was the night before the accident, and no, 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 no. And then there, was, it was the night before the accident, and we were looking, reading through his motorcycle book, me, Uncle Junior, and Slunny, and um, Uncle, um, we, Slunny said she remembered him telling him something about being like too dark outside to ride. So we were looking through his book, and then she was reading it, and then we saw the part that said they're not allowed to ride. They're only allowed to write when it's like the perfect amount of brightness outside, and that's what he was talking about. And then I wrote, I made a bunch of signs that said prohibited, you're not allowed to leave, it's not dark enough outside. And I put it in his lunchbox, and then I put it in his, um, in, all over his bike. And then he wrote back in the morning, and he's like, why were you reading my book? And then, um, and then that was the last time I talked to him, kind of. And I know that he's here for me and that um, I always have him and I miss him a lot and that I love him. Sorry, I have one more story. Oh. <laughs> um, I remember this one time we came to Phoenix and me, and my mom, she took me to McDonald's and then I got <laughs> really sick and then we went to law um, Red Lobster, and once we parked, I threw up in his car, in his tow hall, and then when we were at home, we went back home, and at night, he woke up, like, in the middle of the night, or, like, at one o'clock in the morning, and made me soup while I was sleeping, and then, because he had to go to work, and my mom, I could hear them when I was trying to sleep. And then my mom was like, she's sleeping, you can't give her soup right now. <laughs> and, like, it was really funny though, because he made me soup in the morning when I was sleeping, and I wasn't even awake, so I couldn't eat it. <laughs> and that's all. And I just want to say I love you, Grandpa. And I miss you. Oh, okay, I have two stories. Um, there was this this one time, um, this one time, like, we would always mess around with him because he said that Green Bay was his favorite team, but then he would say, but he would wear the Saints hat, and then he would, like, say, and then whenever the Cardinals would win, or when I got the tickets for my birthday, he said, are you going to take me with you? And I was like, I was like, what about the Green Bay, Grandpa? I thought you were their fan. And then he would always be like, you know, I like the Cardinals, too. And he would always, like, say that he likes every other team, so we called him a 32-teamer. And, um, or a flipper. Flipper. And, um, what was the other story? Mm, I can't remember the other story. I forgot it. Um, 
But okay, but uh, I just wanted to say that I miss him and I love him a lot, and that at least he's in a better place now. But I still miss him. <clears throat>
That's a good thing, Rosie. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm um, I'm Angela. I'm um, the oldest from all the girls here. Um, Davy was my uncle, but everybody knows that um, he always would tell everybody, "You know, you're really my daughter, right?" <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm Chuko's daughter. Um, but my uncle Davy, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here right now. When I was a baby, he found me on the grass. My mom had left me somewhere, and I was really sick. I ended up with spinal meningitis. And if it wasn't for him finding me and going and getting my grandma, I wouldn't have made it. And throughout the years when we were raised by our grandma and grandpa, there was so many people in the house coming in and out, but my mom, my grandma and grandpa, my mom and dad couldn't afford to, to take care of all of us. But no matter what, Davey and Tanya always made sure we had Christmas. They always made sure we had shoes, we had clothes, we had everything that we needed. They took care of us. You know? And it's just, it's... It's not right that he was taken so soon. But I know my mom passed him. In her arms right now, and she's hugging him. You know, I, I lost my mom, my dad, and now my, my, this is my dad. place in our heart. He's one of our guardian angels now. Whenever you guys need him, just look up and talk. He's going to hear you guys. He'll always be there. And he loved all of you guys. All of you. Very, very much. He would always tell me that. I know we all had our differences. You know, but in the end, we all have each other, and we all need to stick with each other. Hello, everyone. My name is Mari. I'm Stephanie's mother-in-law, which I'm very happy and thankful to have her in my life. As we were driving my son and I this morning, I told him that David approached me at uh, grandma's funeral and started talking to me. And I said to my son that I couldn't remember what it was, what he told me. As all of you been going and telling your stories, everything came to me. And he said that he made a lot of mistakes. But he was very happy to see all of you doing well and doing good. And he thanked me for having Stephanie and my love, and I say it's a blessing to me. And I just wanted to share that with all of you. Thank you. Please rest in peace. Please stay happy. Hello, everyone. My name is Brian. And I know we have a special song by Brian's, is that right? And we come up and singing, and, uh, and then after that, they're going to be uh, closing, is that right? And <clears throat> so they'll be meeting down at the park and riverfront, and so you can go there. And some of you may want to share some of your stories. I know it, there's so many here, and like I said, it's all memories and all the times that you spent together. And then as you talk with each other, you remember more of those times. And one memory stirs up another. It's kind of like a line of dynamos, and you suddenly have even more funny and moving and how your lives have been influenced and you'll find even over the weeks to come more of those stories coming. Feel free. Call each other and share and encourage because one thing you find out when you have a loss is family and friends. What a tremendous healing you are to each other. What a strong sense of unity and, and bonding you have and that's one of the things that really when we do have a loss of a loved one is that you all come together and you see yourself as family and friends and 
there's a lot of healing that takes place. So we're going to have um, Brian come up at this time and he's going to sing a song, a Special Memory. Give you guys a little history. Um, I got to jam with Davey a few times. Uh, last time I seen him, he said, we're going to play Simple Man together because I told him I knew how to play the lead. And he knew how to play rhythm. So I'm going to play a little freestyle jam and then I'm going to move into Simple Man. And uh, it's going to be a little hard for me, so I chose not to sing it. But I'm still going to jam it for him.
my, my son Michael found a video of my brother playing the guitar not too long ago. So I'm going to play it for you guys. I won't be able to see it unless you come up here. Thank you for being here. 